Okay. Um, Welcome again, everyone, uh, to the Senate Labor Committee. The committee is now reconvened, and we are going to move right back into the business where we were previously, and I believe that Senator Grunhagen has an amendment that he would like us to consider. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to offer the A-10 amendment. I don't, this, I'm not sure if everybody has a copy. Thank you, Senator Gruenhagen. Senator Gruenhagen offers the A-10 amendment, and I believe that we have uh, passed out the copies. Um, Senator Mann, do you have a copy? Okay. All right. Senator Gruenhagen, to your amendment. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, and what this amendment does, it again, as I said previously before we recessed, the A-9 and A-10 combined actually... Uh, represent the uh, bipartisan Senate bill that was passed on paid leave last session. And again, it was passed on a bipartisan basis. You also heard that when I called the... T oh, I'm sorry. Just a minute. I forgot to shut that off. Uh, you also heard when I called forward the uh, John Reynolds, the F NFIB, uh, representative and also the Minnesota Chamber representative, they both admitted they supported this particular bill and that they support uh, paid annual leave, which we all do here. The question is, which way is better to go? Another government bureaucracy and mandate, or a, which is more like a stick, or a carrot that incentivizes uh, private business to provide through, uh, through insurance um, paid family leave. And because uh, obviously we want to meet the needs of people who uh, had testified earlier, like I brought out the lady with the, with the, ch the small child and then wondering if she could even afford to have a second child. So just to give you a little bit of uh, information on this, the employer would be allowed a credit equal to 25% of the amount of wages paid to the employee while they are on paid leave. Uh, the maximum credit is capped at $3,000 per employee. The amount of leave that may be counted towards this credit is six weeks. Employees are allowed to claim a refundable tax credit for themselves of another 25% of their foregone wages for the period of the unpaid leave for up to six weeks. The proposal creates a balance between employers and employee needs, and I would strongly recommend, and again, it deletes a certain section of the bill. I did speak with Senator Mann a little bit that these two amendments could actually be, in a different way, added to her bill as an option that for businesses, because we do have an opt-out feature in the, in, the, in the main bill, and it would actually incentivize businesses to come up with a paid leave program, because the alternative would be to be under the government program. So the government program could actually be an incentive for businesses to uh, develop their own paid leave and then to apply for an opt-out feature, which they'd still have to pay a fee into the program. But the way the amendment is drafted today, it is a delete uh, of each section. But members, I would encourage a uh, yes vote because I think it would send a message to the author to try to work something out going forward uh, that would balance the needs of both the employer and the employee. Thank you, Madam Chair. And a roll call, please. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. And put uh, it in the journal. And we have a yet, yeah, and we have three people requesting um, that it be published in the journal. A roll call has been requested. A roll call will be granted. Um, 
As uh, the author, I'm going to um, go ahead and turn this over to um, Senator Mann for any reaction um, to the proposed amendment. And then if there's discussion, we can have that after. Senator thank Mann. you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Senator Grunhagen, thank you for the amendment. I would uh, respectfully ask for a no vote on this amendment. Um, it offers 25% of rage replacement, first of all, which is really inadequate. Um, second of all, you have to wait until April when taxes come back to get your refunds. So you could go through a very long period of time without a paycheck, which again defeats the purpose of paid family leave. Um, it only offers parental leave and not uh, medical leave, um, so it does not cover the leave uh, for, for to care for a seriously ill family member or your own condition, um, and there is no protections from losing your job. So um, I, again, I would recommend a no vote. Thank you, Senator Mann. Any discussion? Senator Gruenhagen. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for that response. Any of those concerns, I think, could be addressed uh, inside of this amendment as the bill progresses further. Uh, you know, we could actually work together um, to come up with a solution. I did talk with uh, one of the testifiers who was concerned with the bill, and he did admit there needed to be a few changes in here to make it more palatable if it was attached to the uh, paid, in, uh, the paid uh, sick and family leave bill. But they are willing to work on that. And uh, so again, I think a yes vote would at least get a message sent that this would be a good option to go forward where you'd have the government program available and yet you'd still give private business the option to uh, develop their own and apply for an opt-out that would still be equal with uh, uh, the government program, but it wouldn't uh, grow government as much, and uh, they'd be able to still meet the needs of their employees. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Any further discussion or comment from the committee? Okay. Um, thank you, members. A roll call has been requested on the A-10 amendment, so a roll call will be granted and published in the journal. Could you please take the roll? Chair McEwen. No. Hostchild. No. Dornick. Yes. Grunhagen. Yes. Kupak. No. Liskey. Marty. Umoverbaten. No. Pappas. Wiesenberg. Yes. Three yes, five no. There being five no's and three yes, yeses, um, the A-10 amendment does not pass. Members, any further discussion? Yes. Oh, I do have one more. Okay. Um, are you, are, can we go to Senator Grunhagen's next amendment? Okay. Please proceed, Senator. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, what this amendment does, it's the A-15. Uh, it's a rather, relatively short amendment, but basically what it addresses is right now within the bill, and I'm open to correction on this, um, that 0.7 tenths of 1% charge that uh, people have to pay to fund this program is basically uncapped, which means the department can automatically increase that percentage without House, uh, Senate, or governor approval. So what this amendment does says that that 0.7 is capped and that if a higher percentage was needed, you'd have to uh, have House, Senate, and governor approval before you automatically did that. Otherwise, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, the way I read this, the department has automatically ability to increase the tax on businesses uh, without any type of approval uh, from, from the legislature or the governor going forward. So I would urge members to vote yes on this so we have oversight of this program. As we know, some government programs grow exponentially and uh, the least we can do is have them come back here and uh, be able to review it and the reason why. I mean, we do that with electric companies even. They want a higher, higher electricity rate. They have to go in front of the PUC board to uh, 
to get that approved. So that's the that's the intent of this uh, of this uh, amendment is to make sure that we here, as elected representatives, have oversight of the cost of this program. So I urge a yes vote. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Senator Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair, Senator. Um, so first, just so we um, know where we stand, there is no other state that requires legislative approval to change the premium. Um, and two, having a cap on the premium is actually a conversation that I'm actively having with advocates and um, other people who have been um, participating in these conversations. So that is something that, uh, again, is under consideration. The way that this is written, I would uh, recommend a no vote, um, just because, again, so much thought has gone into the way that this premium will work. Um, and again, it's a conversation that we're having, and so I want to continue having that conversation before I change the bill. Madam Chair? Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you, uh, Senator Mann, for that response, and I appreciate if you could give consideration to that. And um, uh, I would ask for a roll call. Very good. A roll call has been requested. A roll call will be granted. Yes. And placed in the journal. And uh, I, do we have three? Okay, we do have three people requesting. So the results of the vote on the A15 amendment will be published in the journal. Further discussion on the A15 amendment? Okay. There being no further discussion on the A15 amendment, we will take the roll. A15, Chair McEwen. No. Hostchild. No. Dornick. Yes. Grunhagen. Yes. Kupak. Yes. Umover Baton. No. Pappas. No. Wiesenberg. Yes. Four to four. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> very good. Uh, the, the vote uh, being 4-4, four, four, the amendment fails. Further discussion? Um, yes, Senator Wiesenberg. Uh, excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to introduce the A-16 amendment. Um, Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Senator Wiesenberg offers the A16 amendment. Do we have copies of the amendment going out now? And while they're being passed out, please go ahead, Senator. Um, thank you. Um, so before I, so I guess I wanna ask some questions. So I know, so all the money from this, um, all the money from this program is paid into the government, right? It goes to the state of Minnesota. Senator Mann. Madam Chair, um, the money goes into a fund that uh, ultimately goes back to the people of Minnesota. Senator Wiesenberg. And the money's controlled by the, the government, correct? Senator Mann. It is controlled by the, um, the entity that will control the family and, and medical benefit insurance account. Thank you, Senator Mann. Senator Wiesenberg? I just, I, but that's the government, correct? Uh, um, Senator Wiesenberg yes. to, has, uh, w is asking for spe specificity Madam on Chair, that question. Senator Mann? It is not the entire government. It is a part of the government. Thank you. Um, then I would like to know if the author was, uh, um, been up since 5.30 this morning. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'd like to ask the author a question if um, we could um, know the difference, if she could explain the difference between a premium and a tax, please, and thank you. Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Um, Senator Mann, or perhaps your expert, um, if, you, if you would care to answer, there's a question about the difference between premiums and taxes. Thank you. Chair McEwen, members of the committee, I'm not an expert, a legal expert. Maybe counsel would have a 
uh, some advice on what counts as a tax. The word premium is used because it's an insurance uh, program, and that's kind of how we talk about um, contributions to an insurance program. So that was the point of using that term. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Senator Wiesenberg. Thank you. So um, my amendment would be replace all the occurrences of the word premium with the word tax. Um, I do feel this is a tax. Um, I was writing down as we were in committee earlier, and then since I've been gone, I've received more emails from constituents in my community that are small businesses that are worried that one person has three people, and if they're forced to do this, they might go out of business. Now, this is a tax that's going to be put on to small businesses. Um, if we have many private insurance options, you know, that's going to drive down cost, and we're going to have better benefits because we have competition. We're going to have more people competing for the workers, and if they offer something better at a better price, they're going to get it. Um, I feel like this is just a one-size-fits-all socialized, medic socialized medicine. Um, and that just eventually is going to hurt all Minnesotans. You know, it's, it's raising prices for, for employees, and they're going to pass it on to us, and that's just increasing taxes for everybody. Um, you know, last year, this last summer, I, we were out of, I was out of work, my wife was out of work, and just to get subpar coverage from the state of Minnesota, which had the okayest um, medical coverage, it was sixteen hundred dollars a month for five of us. So we made sure the kids were covered, and I had crappy insurance, and so did my wife. You know, it's nineteen thousand two hundred dollars a year. I can't. We can't afford that. So now we're asking for more, more of that. Um, I just don't like this. We need to let. It needs to be a tax. It's not. It's not a premium. It's not a benefit to everybody. This is a tax on people. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Um, Senator. Oh, I'd like a roll call vote in journal. Okay. A roll call has been requested. A roll call will be granted. We have three people requesting that it be published in the journal, the results, and, and so we will do that. Uh, Senator Mann, do you have any further comment? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Senator Wiesenberg. So, uh, I, I would recommend a no vote um, on this amendment. This, again, is an insurance product, and customarily we talk about premiums when we buy insurance. Um, and also, a side note, if a business of three, that would cost the employer less than $10 per week. Um, and lastly, I'm not sure what this has to do with socialized medicine. Actually, I mean, actually, I take that back. This has nothing to do with socialized medicine. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Mann. Any further discussion on the A16 amendment? Um, taking my chair hat off for just a moment, I, it, this is a very interesting idea, Senator uh, Wiesenberg, and I, it, it would be sort of interesting if we started replacing the word premium with tax across the board. Um, I know when we're paying premiums for health insurance and talking about that as a tax, because as you talked about with your example with your family, people are suffering tremendously because of the costs of our medical insurance market. So, um, yeah, this is good discussion. Um, but um, we have a roll call requested. Yes, Senator Wiesenberg. Oh, my mic's still on. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, but that's my, that was my... The intent is if there's more competition, that will drive down costs for everybody rather than having less competition. This is creating less competition in the market. So if we have more options for insurance, we will have better insurance. Um, and that's, that's what I was trying to get at, I'm trying to drive down prices for people so we all have as good insurance as we can get. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Any further comment or discussion? Okay, um, will we please take the roll on the A16 amendment? Oh, I'm sorry, I have A6, this is A16, the A16 amendment. A16 amendment, Chair McEwen. No. Hostchild. No. Dornick. Yes. Grunhagen. Yes. Kupak. No. Marty. Umover Brayton. No. Pappas. No. Wiesenberg. Yes. 
three yes, six no. There being three yeses and six noes, the A16 amendment does not pass. Yes, Senator Wiesenberg. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have, I would like to bring forward the A13 amendment. Um, Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. The A13, uh, Senator Wiesenberg offers the A13 amendment and we are passing that out as we are. Please go to your amendment. Uh, it's, to me, it's simple, I guess. I don't see anywhere in the bill that it requires the recipients of this to be legal residents of Minnesota. Um, so I think that, you know, this program needs to be paid for by the taxpayer. It's being paid for by the taxpayer, so it needs to be people in Minnesota legal residents because the taxpayers are paying for it. So that's who it needs to go to. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Senator Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to point out that human beings are not illegal for existing. And uh, second of all, I would like to recommend a no vote on this amendment. If you pay into the program, you're eligible for the program. Thank you, Senator Mann. Any further discussion on the A13 amendment? Um, yeah. Senator Wiesenberg, yes. do you have a comment? I uh, do. Go ahead. Um, I understand people aren't illegal for existing. Um, and I don't like to talk about my personal background because it's, I, I, maybe it's not important, but I was poor. I grew up in a poor family. I slept on the floor for 18 years. I didn't have a bed. I worked hard to get to where I am. And I get here and now I'm being told that you have to pay taxes for other people. I don't care where people come from, you can come here. But we need to work together and now you're saying, I'm gonna take more from you after I came from nothing, worked hard my whole life. I worked, worked three jobs full time. And now you're telling me I'm gonna take more of your money. So when, when the government asks for more money, I don't ask the government for help, I go get another job. Um, and now when this happens, it costs me more money. That's how I was raised to work hard. I have a hard work ethic. So, you know, it's, it's a tax on me. It's a tax on hardworking Minnesotans. If you wanna come here, I'm, I'm okay with that. Do it the legal way. Um, and that's, that's the way it has to be. I, I want to work together, but man, this sucks for people that are from Minnesota or from wherever. Come here, let's work together, but it's not okay to, for, to be taxing me. I worked hard my whole life to get here. We need to work together, but let's do it the legal way. Thank you. Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Senator Pappas. Madam Chair, I also grew up in a poor family, and my mother was on welfare because my father deserted the family. So, I, you know, I worked hard to get where I am too, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna step on other people who are also working hard to get where, the, where we are, at least, as middle-class Americans. I think in this case, that you are not paying as a taxpayer for this program. This program is being paid for by the worker and the employer, so that people can be healthy and take care of their family when they're ill or take care of themselves when they're ill. It's not funded by the taxpayer. So you are not obligated to pay for this program, Senator Wiesenberger. Thank you, Senator Pappas. And I will remind people to, um, when we're discussing, when we get into these areas that are very personal and very heartfelt, I think you know we can feel our sort of temperature rise a little bit because it's very personal and and we all have feelings of um, we all worked hard in our own capacity and in our own ways in our own situations and um, so with that um, I I welcome further discussion but I want to ask everyone to just be mindful of, of trying to maintain and I think everybody is doing a good job with that but just to maintain it's good for us to have spirited discussions but let's just keep that in mind. And um, Senator Mann, do you have anything further that you would like to add about the A13 amendment? Okay. Any further discussion at all for on the A13? Yes, Senator Gernhagen. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, you know, I, uh, I support legal immigration. I do think by giving benefits to illegal immigrants, uh, that we incentivize them to go through a gauntlet that exploits the children, uh, rapes and exploits women, and degrades all of them. And I, I think the current illegal immigration and the enrichment of cartels and the exploitation of the children and the women 
and even the men who come through there, and I could give you examples of, uh, of uh, how they were murdered or died in a, in a semi-trailer, smothered to death, Madam killed Chair, in accidents. I, I'm going to stop you right there, Senator Grunhagen. Um, I, I think we're getting really far afield here in, when, when we're, we're talking about the family, paid family medical leave bill. We have an amendment that, would, that is related to citizenship, is related to residency in Minnesota, and um, this could open up an entire Pandora's box of discussion if we go down the road that you're proposing. I, I feel myself having a lot of rebuttals to the, all of the things that you just said. So I'm going to ask you to just wrap it up right yeah, now. Yeah, I'll just make one cut. So the more benefits you give to people who come here illegally, and we're all children, grandchildren of immigrants, okay? But they came here legally. But the more benefits you give, the more you incentivize them to go through that gauntlet and enrich uh, the cartels and uh, fentanyl that's killing our young people. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Any further discussion on the A13 amendment? Okay. Um, all in favor of the A13 amendment, say aye. I had not heard a roll call, and I had not heard a roll call requested. Okay, uh, a roll call has been requested on the A13 amendment. It will be granted, and we have three people requesting that it be published in the journal, so it will be on the A13 amendment. Can we please take the roll? A13, Chair McEwen. No. Hostchild. No. Dornick. Yes. Grunhagen. Yes. Kupak. No. Marty. No. Umover Baden. No. Pappas. No. Wiesenberg. Yes. Three. Yes, six, no. There being three yeses and six noes on the A13 amendment, the A13 amendment does not pass. Yes, Senator Dornick. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Chair. So paid family leave is popular. We know that it is. Uh, the polling's there, and we support it too, but we just have a different uh, idea of how it should be done. And we look forward to working to you, working with you as we as I talked earlier uh, before the before we started here. So had a, had a nice talk, and I appreciate <clears throat> the time that you gave me. Um, but as I talk to constituents and tell them more of how it's going to work, they start to be a little concerned when we're going to have a a new government agency. And I know the government means well. I mean, we're not we're not going there. I mean, it's sort of the motive and. We want the same thing. Sometimes there's just different paths to get there. And so that's what we're looking for is, is the right path. Um, and the bureaucracy is, is scary because uh, 200 to 400 employees, uh, 1.7 billion, I think, is what the start, and then approximately a billion dollars a year. Uh, so when I tell them that, then it's like, oh, you know, and the concern. And as I heard through the testimony, uh, 20 to 26 percent, and that, that, that is a little bit of a... Uh, Percentage to be, you know, it's pretty close, I guess, is what I've heard. Um, so, as I mentioned, there's companies that have it and have had it for a long time. Now, it's not to the standard that is in this bill, and I'm just hoping that we can work together to come to a point where some of those businesses uh, can have some time to, uh, you know, just to, uh, to be able to speak to this, this has been another one of the bills that's very quick, and I know it's, it's important, and, and we understand that. And it is important um, to both the employees and the employers, because uh, it's, it's, again, I've said it before, it's a partnership. It's not <clears throat> one is better than the other, or we're going to try to pit this one against that one. It's just um, we want to come to a solution that works well for both. That's my goal, and I think that's your goal also. And I, <clears throat> I'm going to have a few questions. Um, you know, greater Minnesota or rural Minnesota, a lot of agriculture. Uh, and it's different than Minneapolis-St. Paul, and we've talked about that. Everybody knows that. But I guess one question I would ask Senator Mann is, have you done a fair amount of research or talked to the farm community? 
uh, or some, um, I'll just start there, the farm community. If you talk to uh, the farm community that, that have a lot of uh, part-time help in the summer, I'm sorry, more so in the spring and the fall, but so that's my question. Have you reached out and, and uh, talked to uh, independent farmers that uh, this will affect? Thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you, Senator Dornick. Senator Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair, Senator Dornick. So I just want to clarify that it's not $1.7 billion for startup costs. That's just what we asked for, and we crossed our fingers hoping we would get it. That would cover startup. That would cover the program for two full years. So startup costs are like 75 to $100 million, not anywhere near a billion. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up. Second of all, we've had lots of conversations with rural communities, um, Duluth, Alexandria, among others, um, and we've talked to small business owners there, and they have said what you heard some of the testifiers earlier today, is that they want to offer these things to their employees, they care about their employees, they want to work with them, but they can't because they're small, because they have seasonal workers. And so they, you know, were quite happy that we would offer a program that they would able, be able to participate in. Um, and mitigate some of that cost so that they can offer their employees the things that they need to be happy and healthy. Thank you, Senator Mann. I'll follow up, Madam Chair. Follow up, Senator Dornick. So um, thank you, uh, Senator Mann, for that. Um, but still, the $1.7 billion is coming from a surplus that could be used for some other things. So, so I, I didn't know that, so thank you for, for that information. But it's still, that's still a lot of money. Um, so with the agriculture, I know that in, in my district it's, it's not very popular, so, and a lot of people don't even know about it yet. They're, they're just hearing about it and they're, they're concerned. And just a few facts in the agriculture committee yesterday. Um, I only go three, because numbers sometimes just kind of, right, it's kind of go over our heads. Uh, but $112 billion annual income, I'm sorry, annual economic impact from Minnesota food and agriculture sector. 112 billion, and then 51 percent of the state's land, so the, is uh, agriculture. Well, that's huge. I mean, that was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that much. And then 17 billion dollars of annual agriculture sales. So this is a big part of uh, the Minnesota's economy. So uh, I just really want to reach out to them and have you reach and, and reach out to them and talk um, and, and work through this to, to get them involved in the, the conversation more. Because I, like I said, a lot of them don't know about it. Um, and I'm going to offer an amendment uh, that speaks directly to this. And many times we, we do exempt the agriculture community because it's, it's different. It's, it's just not, it's unique. And uh, agriculture has always been uh, very important to the state of Minnesota, and so there has been exceptions uh, for them. So, the amendment would be the A13. Thank you, I'd like Senator. To offer the A13 amendment. Thank you. Oh, wait, I think oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong. Um, my notes. Uh, 17. Sorry. Okay, 17. Thank so, uh, thank you, Senator Dornick. Senator Dornick offers the A17 amendment, and um, we're getting that passed out as we are. Um, please go ahead, Senator Dornick, to your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, it's just adding uh, a clarification for. So, it's in page 10 of the uh, the bill, line 1013, right after uh, number two. It's this is three, and it just says. A person or entity engaged in the production of agricultural commodity, commodity as defined. So just adding uh, that exclusion for the farming community, for those farmers that hire, again, in the spring. And it's just short-time help. It's part-time. Uh, and I'm sure it would be more than 90 hours. So they would have to. Sometimes uh, it's not always just the financial impact. We always, uh, I mean, the first thing is, well, it's only cost us $3 a day or, or something like that. But uh, the paperwork that goes into a business owner is, and farm, it's a lot. And they'd have to go through all this and make sure they're going to, you know, so it is, it is a big deal to, to the farming community. So thank you, Madam Chair. And I asked for a roll call and it entered in the journal, too. 
Thank you, Senator Dornick. Um, we have a roll call has been requested on the A17 amendment. It will be granted, and we have three people requesting that it be printed in the journal. Um, so we will also do that. Um, Senator Mann, um, would you like to respond? Well, we can also take some discussion first, if I, and then I can give you the last word. Um, Senator Hauschild. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Um, Senator Dornick, have you talked to Farmers Union about this amendment? Have you been talking to the farm organizations? I'm just curious what. I have not talked to the, oh, sorry, Madam Chair. That, that was it, that was it. I have not talked to the Farmers Union, no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Senator Gruenhagen. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I have to support this amendment and urge everybody else to. I was raised on a farm and you know, farmers will hire people for uh, heavy workload times in, uh, in spring, summer, and even fall, and possibly winter. But it's very uh, you know, seasonal as far as uh, how much they need and when they need it. And it, it's gonna be a confusing time for them if I read this bill the way it's written and I would urge a uh, yes vote on this, and also, if it does fail, that uh, the author would take that into consideration, that there are some industries that are going to make it very difficult to comply with this, and then um, and also the fines that are in there if they don't. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Um, further discussion before we go to Senator Mintz. Senator, uh, Wiesberg. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have worked at a farm, um, still work at a farm part-time when they need help, like with hay or cutting wood or those kind of things. And, um, you know, to kind of get to the point of exempting it, you know, maybe they can't offer <coughs> you um, sick, sick time or something, but like, and if you're a part-time worker, they, you know, like the farmer I worked for, I, I worked full-time, but, um, we had a calf that broke its leg, so he gave me that, and I ate it. You know, we ate it. Uh, we had a cow that stepped in a gopher hole, and you know, he only charged me 50 cents a pound for the meat. So I had a deal there. Uh, you know, I get cheese and milk and hay and you know those kinds of things. So there's other things to show that we're appreciative of that in those kinds of situations where you know they they have the ability to do that, and it is, you know, it's helping out their worker. So I just want to I just want to share that. Thank you, Senator Wiesenberg. Um, Senator Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would request a no vote on this amendment. Um, I completely understand your intent, Senator Dornick. However, the conversations I've had with people, farming communities, um, again, they do not want to be cut out of this benefit. Um, and if I said this the other day, when we ask people to be cut out of this benefit, we are telling them that their babies don't matter, that their loved ones don't matter, that it doesn't matter if they break their legs, and it doesn't matter if their help breaks their leg. Um, and so if that's a conversation you want to have with a farmer, be my guest, let me know how it goes, but that's not a conversation I'm willing to have with the agriculture community because I think that they deserve this benefit as well. Thank you, Senator Mann. And we have had a roll call requested, it will, so we will proceed to that. One last um, comment, Senator Dornick. Uh, I just am confused by that last response. So you're insinuating that uh, some farmers don't care about people? Is that what you're insinuating, Senator Mann? Um, I'm, I am going to just um, put a little pause on this because we want to be very careful that we're not um, disparaging or insinuating that we're another member's intent or, or what they're saying. So I just, uh, if, if you would like to um, answer that question, and I, I believe that the, the question is well-intentioned and asking for clarity, that's how I'm hearing it, but I just want to make Thank sure that to sure. acknowledge. It was, it was kind of a strange response, I thought, but... Uh, Go ahead. I under we understand that it hit you in, in a strange way, but if you care to respond, Senator Mann, you may, otherwise we'll proceed to the roll call. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, no, Senator, you misunderstood me. Um, what I meant was, is when we tell people, when we 
ask a certain group of people like farmers to be cut out of this benefit, to me, that is us telling them, we're gonna cut you out of this benefit because your babies don't matter, because it doesn't matter when you get sick. You don't deserve this benefit. So we are gonna cut you out of the program and make a carve out for that group. I don't think that's right because I think everyone deserves this benefit. Does that make better sense? Thank you, Senator Mann. Okay, we, a roll call has been requested on the A-17 amendment. To the A-17 A amendment, will you please take the roll? A-17, Chair McEwen. No. Hostchild. No. Dornick. Yes. Grunhagen. Yes. Kupek. No. Marty. No. Umover Baden. No. Pappas. No. Wiesenberg. Yes. Three yes, six no. There being three yeses and six noes on the A-17 amendment, the amendment does not pass. Senator Dornick. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm just going to give a few, I don't know if anybody else wants to, final thoughts. Just uh, I appreciate uh, the time that you give us. Madam Chair, you're doing a great job. I appreciate your, uh, the way you run the community. You're doing a good job. So and the time that you give each one of us to speak. So thank you. Senator Mann, thank you for bring the bill. Uh, I'm still hoping that uh, we can have some time to talk and I'm looking forward to that. Um, and as the bill progresses to get to the floor, I'm hoping that we can do some changes. Um, and again, just to stress, I, I support the farmers, the business owners, and the employees. We, uh, I'm looking forward to coming to a, um, a bill like we, we talked, or I talked earlier, that uh, Minnesota can be proud of and that we can do some uh, working together to, to still work out some details I, at, that I'm uh, concerned about and, and uh, some of the small businesses are concerned about and it's not that they don't care for people, they really do and their workers and it's such a, such a neat relationship, you know, many of these small businesses uh, and it's, it's such a, it's like a family to them, their workers and I know I had a small business and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. And uh, when you only have two or three, four uh, employees, it, 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 uh, they're like your family. And so, um, again, I just uh, look forward to, to working with you, and we'll go from there. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Dornick. Senator Grunhagen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, the, um, one of the questions that was asked of me is what's the procedure for opting out? I see it in the bill. I had it marked off better before recess, but I think it starts on page 36. So if a company wants to do a private plan, um, how do they go about opting out from the government mandate? They still have to pay a fee. I think it's $250. Uh, is it per employee or one-time fee? Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Senator Mann. It's a one-time fee, Madam Chair. Okay. So if Senator Mann could enlighten uh, how a company would go about that procedure if they wanted to uh, substitute a private plan for the, for the uh, government program. Senator Mann. Madam Chair, Senator Grunhagen, you apply with deed. Pardon? You apply with deed. Okay. Thank you, Senator Mann. Senator Grunhagen? Uh, Madam Chair, so is the application on the internet or? Senator Mann? Uh, it will either be, uh, I think the bill says it can be electronic or by mail. So whatever deed um, prefers. Uh, Madam Chair, I believe there's rulemaking involved here that would work out the details. Thank you, Senator Pappas. Um, Senator Grunhagen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, so is the plan to apply the tax within, I think, six months for the premium? And <laughs> it's a tax to me, but I'll use your, your verbiage. And then when would they actually implement uh, the paid family leave? Because we've been given information that for there would be a year or two of paying this premium, seven-tenths before the implementation, or maybe your... your uh, Assistant, or your helper there can address that. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Senator Mann. Um, <laughs> Ms. Deb Fitzpatrick, is that my assistant or my helper? <laughs> uh, 
Well, I wondered if she was any of your employee, to tell you the truth. No. No. <laughs> but she can answer that question. Hi, uh, Chair McEwen, <laughs> Senator Grunhagen. Uh, yes, um, my name is Deb Fitzpatrick, and I am the Director of Policy and Research at Children's Defense Fund, um, and was involved uh, in the state, led the research team that conducted the state's uh, design and implementation study. So I could say a little bit about the timeline. Uh, basically, the way the bill is structured right now, there would be about a two-year uh, time frame for to, to get the program up and running, at which point both the benefits and the premium would kick in at the same time. Uh, at, and the, you know, that money that we talked about earlier, the 1.7, I'm sure that's going to be up for debate, but the point of that was to, again, front load the fund so we'd have money to pay for the benefits um, and start the premiums at the same time as the benefits. Thank you very much, Ms. Fitz Fitzpatrick. Um, yes, yeah, Senator Grunhagen. Okay, so your businesses are not going to have to pay that 0.7. Where's the the upfront funding come from, from the general fund then? Is that thank, the idea? Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Um, either Senator Mann or Ms. Fitzpatrick, if you care to answer yeah, that. Madam Chair, thank you. So we asked for that money from the surplus. So from. Thank you, Senator Mann. Yes, Senator thank Grunhagen. You, uh, Madam Chair, so basically it's gonna come out of the general fund um, to, the, to fund it initially, okay. And then uh, I do have a few discussion points. Can I, okay. After you. All right. The, um, the other thing is I, um, I know at the previous uh, committee meeting, the uh, MSBA uh, testified against this and its impact on schools. I would just like to see what the author of the bill thought about how it's going to affect schools in terms of... Uh, of the, this mandate from the state, uh, Senator Mann. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen, and um, I. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, my, my comment as chair is just that I know that we've had some, this, this bill is going to go through many committees, and so we, we do <laughs> want to at least somewhat try to stay within the parameters of our jurisdiction, but I realize that we have allowed larger, broader discussion of the bill in general, so we'll go ahead with that question, I'll but narrow, I just want to, yeah, okay. I'll it a little bit. Okay. I guess when I see the $10,000 fine, is that going to also apply to school districts? Thank you, Senator Gruenhagen. Senator Mann? Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, it's one to 10,000, and it's based on the size of the corporation or business um, and their income. So I would highly doubt that a school would be, or a, a school district would be charged $10,000. Thank you, Senator Mann. Senator Gruenhagen, follow up? Okay. I'll. This will be my last point. You know, uh, we heard testimony about the high cost of Minnesota, and I know this is a premium. I call it a tax, but uh, that's just a difference of verbiage. But this was actually put together by the Minnesota Chamber. In terms of our state business tax, we're sixth right now in 2023. Uh, Pass-through income for tax rates, we're sixth out of 50 states. State and local taxes were 17th. Corporate tax were third. Overall state and local taxes were 10th. So we're definitely among the top, and also as far as the cost of doing business, we're in the top uh, 20 in the nation. So I mean, adding additional onto that to push us into a higher ranking is gonna, you know, is going to d increase the cost of doing business, and it's also going to increase uh, the taxes uh, on people. Uh, again, um, we do all support paid family leave, but I do think the private solution is a much better option than the direction that we're going. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Grunhagen. Further discussion on Senate File 2. Uh, Senator Housechild, I believe, here to... Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what makes Minnesota special. Um, you know, it's my sense and, and really why my wife and I, you know, decided to, to make this place our home and raise our kids here is because in Minnesota, we have this thing, Minnesota Nice. 
people go out of their way to help their friends, you know, family, neighbors, but also complete strangers. And what makes our state so strong is that we have each other's back in that way. And it's my sense that, you know, in my wife's and I case, we're pretty lucky. We have good jobs. We both work. We're well-educated. We've worked really hard, much like other speakers have talked about. Um, and we were given some modest time off with my now two-year-old and my daughter's birthday is this weekend. She's going to be one. Um, and we were given some modest time off. It wasn't enough. Uh, and I've seen, um, you know, the stress that has been put on my wife through that process. But I don't want that for just my family. Just because I have a, a good job or I work for an employer that has 15,000 employees uh, should not be a reason that I get paid family leave or that my wife gets paid family leave. Uh, our society, our community in Minnesota is stronger when all families, all individuals, all workers have access to this right. We also know there's been a lot of talk about sort of the economics of this or the business climate of Minnesota. Minnesota has some of the, the, the highest numbers of Fortune 500 companies. That didn't come about uh, because of a tax environment. That came about because of entrepreneurship. It came about because of hardworking people in Minnesota, because of our education system and the U of M Research Center that developed a lot of the opportunities in our state. We make investments in Minnesota in a strong economy. We, we make investments in the people of Minnesota. Uh, and providing paid family leave, make sure that everybody has access to be the best person that they can be and care for their children when it matters most. Uh, so I couldn't be more excited uh, to support this legislation. I am thrilled that Senator Mann is bringing this forward. I thank the experts uh, in the audience, in particular Ms. Fitzpatrick, for bringing uh, this idea forward over all these years that have been waiting uh, for this moment. Um, and I just want to say I appreciate the, the in-depth conversation we've had, and I look forward to making this happen together. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Housechild. Uh, Senator Marty. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Senator Mann, for carrying this bill. I think it's long overdue, and and I, with Senator Housechild and several others, have pointed out um, Senator Wiesenberg talking about his farmer friend who care about their employees, care deeply about them, and so many of them don't have the opportunity to do this without a program that's set up that they can opt out of if they can do it better on their own. But um, when I think about all the wonderful employers and how much they care, this Mr. Copland who testified this afternoon, very powerful thing on how he wants to do it. And, and I, I hope members will read this, Voices of Main Street, the small business owners, the one from small letterpress shop in St. Joseph, how much this would mean to her and somebody who's been through cancer, somebody in downtown Bemidji, all these folks who are talking about what this means for them and how important it is. And I, I understand people say, oh, this is going to cost them something. You know, the workers who don't get the care they need don't have the time off for their families. That's what you're addressing. And I think that far outweighs the other costs of it. And that's why I think you have so much popular support for it. Thank you, Senator Marty. Senator Kubek. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll be brief because I do have a three and a half hour drive ahead of me here tonight. Uh, so uh, what I also want to, well, we're talking a lot about the costs. Um, there are places that this is going to save us some money too. We agree, uh, when I talk to the Chamber of Commerce in my area, their number one concern is child care. And what is the most expensive child care we have in this state? It is those newborn infants. And they child care providers said to me, we would really like this because this will free up, we don't have the bed space for those, those brand new newborns. And allowing mothers or fathers to stay at home and stay home with those new newborns uh, is, gonna be, is gonna help them. It's gonna be a cost to the state because we're eventually, we're gonna have to deal with child care. The other thing we have to deal with is on the other end, it's the silver tsunami. We keep talking about the number of aging parents. And if somebody can take some time off and help their parent stay in their house, that's a better outcome for that parent. It's a better outcome for the state because we're not going to, well, in a lot of cases, they're, they're stacked up in hospitals because there isn't the room in long-term care facilities. That costs a lot of money. This will help alleviate on both sides of that. So that's why I'm gonna support this. Thank you, Senator Kubek. 
Senator Pappas. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you so much, Ms. Fitzpatrick, for your eight plus years work uh, advocating for this program. Uh, we really appreciate you being here and your expertise and hanging in there. And thank you so much, Senator Mann, for having authored this in the House. And it's clear um, you know this bill backwards and forwards. Uh, I think you probably passed it on the House floor several times. And nope, only once. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we really appreciate you joining us in the Senate and bringing it to uh, before us to have our, you know, our first hearings here in the Senate. And I think this is going to be an amazing benefit for all the families of Minnesota. I'm very excited to be supporting it. Thank you, Senator Pappas. Senator Umu Verbetten. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Mann, for your work on this. And thank you, Ms. Fitzpat Fitzpatrick, for your work on this as well. I know lots of families in my district are eagerly awaiting this and across our state. Uh, so with that, I move um, that Senate File 2, as amended, be recommended for passage and be referred to Health and Human Services. Thank you, Senator Umu Verbetten. All in favor of the motion to um, that Senate, Senate File 2, as amended, be recommended to pass and be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. Please say aye. 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 All those not in favor, against? No. The motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody, for your patience and your hard work and your participation in our hearing today. The Labor Committee is adjourned.